Go to Dewar.ca and use the code JesseBlake15 to save 15% off of your purchase today. That's Dewar.ca. And the Dewar.ca, you'll see that they make the world's most comfortable pants. They have the performance denim that allows you to move effortlessly from the bike lane to the boardroom and into the evening with comfort and style. And like I always talk about the performance denim and how comfy it is and everything, but it They also have these joggers that are unbelievable. I own a pair. They're called the No Sweat Jogger. I own the Relaxed Fit because, like, I don't think the skinny pants are are, look that good on me because my legs are so long. So I like the No Sweat Jogger and the Relaxed one. Can't recommend them enough. So comfy, perfect for everything I do in my entire life because joggers are perfect for everything. So go to doer.ca, use the code JesseBlake15, save 15% on your purchase today. This episode is also brought to you by Sports Interaction. If you think you know what way it's going to go, make your bet at Sports Interaction. Whatever your sport, Sports Interaction has you covered. Pre-game, live betting on all major sports, and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. The Jesse Blake Sports Report. Really? Oh, wait, really? The Jesse Blake Sports Report. That's it? Don't forget, it's the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. <laughs> you know, that's kind of redundant. Dude, is there a problem? And it's just fine. I, I just, you know, I thought maybe you guys would come up with something, you know, good. Man, I just read it. You know what? Doesn't matter to me. I get paid by the word. <laughs> Let's do this. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? <laughs> Does everybody know that meme from Breaking Bad where Aaron Paul, Jesse Pinkman is yelling and he's like, they can't keep getting away with this. You can't keep getting away with this. He can't keep getting away with it. He can't keep getting away with this. Does everybody know that meme? Uh, that's how I feel about the Packers. Watching the Packers this year, I'm like, they can't keep getting away with this. Yesterday afternoon, they beat the Vikings 41-17. to They improved to 8-8 eight and eight on the season. This means next week, week 18, the Packers play the Lions. And in that game, if the Packers win that game, they're into the playoffs. It's win and they're in for the Packers. And it's, it's crazy that we've gotten to this point in the season because right now, or this year, they started 4-8. They're on a four-game winning streak. They lost back-to-back games versus the Titans and Eagles at the end of November. And the narrative at that time was about like them trading away Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers having no weapons, um, him going to the Jets next year and bailing on the Packers completely. Their defense couldn't beat an NCAA team. All of this stuff, and it was a horrific season for the, the Packers, and it was a restart year and a reset year, and... Now we're at a point where they're going to week 18, they could beat the Lions and make the playoffs. So so that's all happening. And then they have this four-game winning streak. They beat Miami. They steal a game versus the Dolphins last week where they, they really shouldn't have won that game. They steal it out from under them. They beat up on the Vikings last night. And then they have those two wins versus the Bears and the Rams where they just got to take care of business. And And all of a sudden, this is the team of destiny. This is, this is the team that everybody's looking towards and like, we don't want to play them. We don't want to play in the playoffs. And like, I want to take a moment to talk about yesterday's game. There was a lot that came out of the game, especially with Jair Alexander and Justin Jefferson. And the fact that Justin Jefferson, the best wide receiver in the league when Cooper Cup is injured, was held to one reception for 15 yards. That's unreal. And it's unreal job by Jair. And before you start yelling at me, yes, I know. It's not all the the CB's job to shut down the the wide receiver. Okay, so so the safeties that play up top, especially if you're like a too high defense, they're doing just as much work on that wide receiver to cover them and shut them down. And they the safeties on the Packers uh, did a wonderful job yesterday as well. And you also have to give credit to Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator, for creating a scheme that shuts down Justin Jefferson. So and KJ Osborne had his had a field day because. JJ was so shut down. So we have to give that credit. Yes, before the comments start getting angry about all the attention that Jair Alexander is receiving today, credit must be given to the safeties. The safeties are putting a lot of help and helping these cornerbacks and DBs cover these wide receivers as well. So now that's that's out of the way. Let's shine some light on Jair, uh, Jair Alexander because he is he's talking smack to everybody who will listen 
And I think he's got that dog in him. We'll, we'll declare right now, Jair's got that dog in him. Here's what he said to the CBS broadcast post game. Well, Jair, we heard it all week long. Le- week one was a fluke. You wanted this one-on-one. We talked about it this week. What was the difference with you going up against Justin Jefferson today? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I was able to follow him. I was able to go to his side all game. And, uh, you know, I'm the type of person, I'm going to match intensity. So that's what I did all night. I mean, hats off to him. He's still in my top three receivers. <laughs> you know, he's still a great receiver. Um, you know, but, but I'm confident in myself. And I said what I said, and I meant what I said. What is it about this defense and the way they are playing right now? Man, it's exciting to see, man. Those guys up front are getting after it. And, uh, you know, the guys in the back and are getting the ball. Like, our safeties, they got so many picks today, man. It was good to see. And here's what he said in the locker room while wearing that ginormous Packers meme hat. And tell Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless they need to, you know, watch what they say when they talk about me. You feel me? That's what, They need to watch what they put out talking about he a good corner, great corner. And then here is Aaron Rodgers to the CBS broadcast as well, post game talking about Jair. They did, especially Jair. I know he wanted that matchup with Justin Jefferson. Look, when he talked to talk, you gotta back it up. So I'm proud of two, three. I mean, he's a great player, great guy. 18 for them is a stud, absolute stud. There wasn't one on one all game, I can promise you that, because that guy's too damn talented. But John did a great job, you know. And lastly, because. This is the most fun thing that happened. Jair hitting the gritty after an incompletion on JJ. Second and 10. Here we go up top, sideline, and incomplete. And that was Alexander who broke it up. Oh, he's got a little gritty right next to Jefferson. Jair, he's having, he's having a good season. It wasn't the best start to the season because it wasn't a good start to the season for anybody on the Packers. We've outlined that already. There were four and eight. The defense looked bad the offense looked worse and Jair was amongst that like he didn't have a good start to the year but now he's he's up to third in the league in receptions interceptions he has five of them so far and he's really coming into his own here as a young player like I I'm calling him a young player it is his one two three fourth full season in the league last year he only played four games so fourth full season in the league 63 uh 61 career starts so Young player, 25, though, 25. We're, we're, we don't have Jair, Jair Alexander on our radar, and this game might have been the one that jumpstarts him into the national spotlight where we look at these big games and we say, hey, here's their number one cornerback. Is he going to take care of business versus the number one wide receiver? So looking at the game last night, one thing that really stood out, and the broadcast pointed that, uh, this out as well, and I want to just highlight it here for a little bit while everybody's talking about his game. He was smacking the hell out of Justin Jefferson at the line of scrimmage. It was it was a crazy thing to watch because you know you can get the the 5 yards you can get to touch the wide receiver as they come off of the line of scrimmage. But Jair was doing this thing where he would just run at him and smack him as hard as he could. Here's a couple of clips of of that happening and as you can see on the screen right now and it was it was it was ferocious to the point where you could notice it during the game. You could notice him just getting right up in Justin Jefferson's grill and smacking him. And for somebody who is the one of the most talented route runners in the entire league, one of the quickest players on his routes, uh, able to lose any cornerback at any time, JJ clearly seemed thrown off by how hard Jair was hitting him right at the line. And it was, I've never seen a cornerback take advantage of the rule like that. It worked to his credit, and look at the game that Justin Jefferson had. It was it was absolutely mind-blowing to, to watch. And for the Packers as a whole here, they really do seem like a team of destiny. Aaron Rodgers is having a lot of fun, which is very important to the success of this franchise, is, is keeping Aaron Rodgers happy. Uh, whether you like that or not, that's that's what's going to be driving the Packers right now. And Christian Watson also, he's a weapon. Like that's a that's a serious target that that Rodgers has now. Now that Christian Watson has emerged late in the season, and I don't want to play in the Packers in the first round. We're going to look ahead here. Like I said, next week they play the Lions. If they beat the Lions, there are four teams that the Packers could play. They could play the Eagles. They could play the 49ers. They could play the Cowboys. They could play the Vikings again. All four of those teams could wind up second in the NFC, and the Packers are locked into the seventh seed if they beat the Lions. 
looking at those games, personally, if I'm going to place a bet on sportsinteraction.com slash SGPN, I would take the Packers straight up versus the Cowboys and the Vikings. I wouldn't take the Packers if they're playing the Eagles with Jalen Hurts. If Garner Minshew's in there, you know, I'll probably lead in Packers. And then the 49ers, 49ers are a team I have looking. Uh, I think I'm taking them to the Super Bowl. So I don't know. I definitely wouldn't take them versus the Packers there in round number one. With all that being said, the Packers do have to beat the Lions on Sunday to make the playoffs. And they're favored in the game. Uh, it's uh, Detroit's getting four and a half points. Uh, 1.91 are the odds on sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. I, 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 this is probably a stay away for me because the Lions have, Jared Goff and the Lions have looked very good. I mentioned Jared Goff specifically because he helped my fantasy football team to a championship. I, I Jalen Hurts all season long and then he went down and I picked up Goff on the, on the waiver wire and he's been excellent during the fantasy football playoffs. So I know that he's been excellent in real life. A couple, uh, three TD games. He's looked really good. The Lions are a dangerous team, but the Packers might be the team of destiny. Four and eight to start the year. Serious chance that in three weeks time, they could be one win away from an NFC title game. That is crazy. That's a, if you're a Packers fan, you got to be elated for how this season has turned around. That is one hell of a turnaround. Let me know in the comments if you think they can keep getting away with this. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake, powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.